All right, welcome back in this video. We're gonna go over Savalis' reactions. I made a grand total of $0 in the past 28 days. We're also getting a lot of subscribers recently, so thank you so much for that. Like and subscribe, life short. All right, what are Savalis' reactions? I am not shitting you. Savalis' reactions are just SN1 and E1 reactions. I know you're like, oh, God damn it, we're doing this again? There's a reason we're doing this. So first up, what is, why is it called Savalis' reactions? Solvo, meaning solvent, and lysis, meaning cut, means that the solvent that we're using in a reaction breaks the alkyl halide bond, but also acts as a nucleophile and base. I should probably put that plus base. Okay. So it is doing two things. Almost all Savalisis reactions are SN1, except if there is heat involved. If there is heat involved, you do E1, okay? Let me give you an example. So say we have a reaction and say we had some boring alkyl halide on the left. And I give you a solvent, something like water. This would proceed as SN1, most likely if the conditions were like, you know, fine and the alkyl halide looks proper. They would look, it would, this would be an SN1. However, if I were just to put a magic triangle here, then it become E1. The triangle means heat. Okay, it, it could also spell out heat too, right? So it could actually say heat. Then it would be E1. So this video is going to help you identify when to do SN1 and when to do E1. Because that is the biggest problem students have, is they do not know when to decipher. Because the reagents, the, I'm sorry, sorry, the solvents are the same. Okay, so I've seen a YouTube video. So actually a few YouTube videos out there on Savalis' reactions. Some by some popular YouTubers that I will not mention. They say that SN1 only occurs in Savalis. That is incorrect. Savalis includes SN1 and E1. Because think about this. Water, ethanol, methanol, these solvents are used for both SN1 and E1. So it's not proper to say it only occurs in SN1 reactions. It happens at E1 too, you just gotta eat, you just gotta add heat to it. So that is why we're doing this. We are learning to decipher between SN1 and E1. And I'm gonna tell you so, so easy. I'm also gonna teach you something you probably will see on a test. So please stick around, especially for the challenge problem right here. This challenge problem, I'm telling you is gonna be so, so, so helpful for exams because you would not believe it, but there are five answers. There were five different products for this challenge problem. All right, let's do the first one. Draw all the expected products for the Savalis' reactions below. So we have this alkyl halide here with the bromine. Here's the first step. First step, look at, you know, just to check the solvent. It is indeed a solvent, ethanol, perfect. So this means automatically, you see ethanol, we're gonna do either SN1 or, e, or E1. Then you see heat. Heat automatically eliminates SN1. So this just leaves E1. Because heat, you immediately think E1. That's right there, I'm telling you right there, sorry. Right there is the golden ticket, that's the cheat code. If you see heat, throw everything out of your mind and start doing E1, okay? So what's the first step in the mechanism? Let's do green today. Leaving group leaves, okay? Second, if you need help with elimination reactions, like I, I've been doing this for so long, like I can immediately identify where the double bond's gonna go. But if you've not, right, here's a, here's a, here's a trick. First, identify the alpha carbon. The alpha carbon is the carbon directly bonded to the, the halide, right? So this would be the alpha carbon this right here because it's directly bonded to the halogen. All adjacent carbons are beta carbons. So let's label those as well. Beta carbon, beta carbon, beta carbon, okay? So the double bond always forms between the alpha and beta carbon. So it's either gonna form here, it's gonna either form here, it's gonna form here and not here because this bond goes away, okay? When we we're talking about Zaitsev and Hoffman in my previous videos. I mentioned Zaitsev well, for E1. Zaitsev is always the major product and Hoffman is always the minor product. And the Zaitsev always goes on the more substituted carbon for the beta carbon. So the trick is, is look at the beta carbon and count how many branches are coming off of it. 
This beta carbon has one branch coming off of it, right? This branch right here. This beta carbon has no branches coming off of it. We do not count the bond between the alpha and beta carbon. So there are no more branches coming off, right? It doesn't exist. There's nothing there. So zero branches. And same with this one. Same case for that one. So we know that the Zaitsev bond or Zaitsev product, I should say, is going to go right here, right? That would be the double bond. And the Hoffman will either be here or here. You can choose. Okay. So let's do the Zaitsev first. So the carbocation, since we're doing E1, we have a carbocation, right? With E2 and SN2, there's no carbocation. With E1 and SN1, we always have a carbocation. But this is E1. So we get a carbocation because this leaves first. Then we're going to sacrifice a beta hydrogen, right? That's a hydrogen located on a beta carbon. And we're doing this one because we're looking for the Zaitsev product. And we want the bond to form between these two carbons. So, you have the electrons, and these will go, snatch these up, and this bond, the electrons will be transferred here, okay, there we go, and that's the answer, plus, so don't forget this, on test, do not forget this, plus, ET, OH2 because remember the base has stolen the proton for itself so you must include the proton the additional proton that the base has stolen okay what about the Hoffman product okay so we can either go for here or here I don't it does not matter we are going to aim for this one so Same thing, same thing, carbocation, same exact deal, but now we're going to steal this beta hydrogen. So, let me just reuse this arrow here, let me just go like this. Let me steal this. This bond breaks and goes over here to form a double bond. That's a messy arrow. And then we get this. Okay? And that would be the Hoffman product or the minor product as well. And then we have plus. See, it's, it's literally the same thing, right? It's, oh, wait, 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 wait. I forgot something. I forgot something. I forgot something. Oh, did any of you guys catch it? I forgot. Oh, shame on me. I forgot to put the bromine. Right? It goes somewhere. It, it has to go somewhere, so you have to draw the bromine. Don't forget, you get points off. Okay, let's do B. So this is the answer, right? These are the answers, right? This is the Zaitsev, this is the Hoffman, plus the base, plus the halide. Okay, about this one. Okay, so we have this alkyl halide, and we have water. We have no heat added, so this is going to be an SN1 reaction. So let's do it. First step, leaving group leaves. Always, always, always an S and one E1. Leaving group leaves. We are left the carbocation here because this bond has now gone away. This carbon is missing a bond now. So we have now a positive uh, ion. Or, not positive. Uh, carbocation. All right, so now we're going to use the electrons. And it's going to attack the carbocation. Homing missile, right? So, what happens? Water is going to be attached here, okay? Like this. You cannot leave the answer like this. This is incorrect. You cannot have a positive, you cannot end your answer with a carbocation. That is not, maybe your professor is okay with it, but most, most are not. You cannot end it like this. What do we do? Right, I know, the, I know clearly the water is here, but what do you do, and why is it still here? Okay, let me break it down, because this is a concept that a lot of students uh, forget, or don't really know about, or they don't understand. Because they, they just leave it like this, and they think that's okay. Why is there water here? Savalas' so reactions, when you use the solvent... Usually, typically in real life, you use a lot of solvent. There's usually excess solvent. 
So that means there's still water in the beaker and it's still going to be reacting. So what's going to happen is water is going to deprotonate the hydrogen. It's going to steal it. And watch what happens. When we steal it, let's steal this one. When we steal it, right? So the, the protons from the, I'm oh, sorry, the electrons from the oxygen are going to steal the, the hydrogen here. This bond, electrons go to the oxygen now, and it fixes this carbocation so it no longer exists. And then we get the deprotonated version, which is, you know, an alcohol here, hydroxide. And then we are left with hydronium. Right, because remember, water has stolen a proton. So we have one extra proton to water, so that's hydronium now. And the electrons are now to the oxygen, which fixes the charge. No more carbocation. And then we have to add that it was a chlorine. So plus the chlorine with all of its happy electrons. Okay? And that's the answer. So it's not too bad, right? All right, show me all the stereochemical products for the SN1 and E1 products for this reaction. Okay, I'm not going to do the mechanism here because it would be a lot to do, but I'm going to explain it because it's the same thing. It's just a little different here. So I'm drinking my tea. All right, here we have methoxide and he uh, sorry, methanol, not methoxide, methanol and heat. So you're thinking, okay, this should be E1. You would be correct. You are doing E1 here. However, I'm saying show me the SN1 as well. So unless it stays on your test, right, then just do whatever it says, like if you, whatever you know, right? So if it was just heat, right, they do E1. If, it, if this wasn't here, then just do SN1. But I'm saying show me the SN1 and E1 products. There's a reason I'm doing this. It's because... There's special circumstances when you have wedges and dashes, okay? So let's do the substitution reaction for our SN1. So in other words, methoxy is going gonna, is gonna to go here, okay? So remember, we cut off... So this, remember when we do the reaction, right? The nucleophile is this entire thing. It's going to join here, but then since we have excess of methanol, the methanol is, the methanol is going to steal the proton from here, right? And then it would be methoxy, just like this, right? Just like this, same thing, except we're just replacing this with water, right? This was water. This is now uh, methanol. So what's gonna happen is we are going to get this being replaced with methoxy, right? No more hydrogen, right? The hydrogen cannot be there. Right, then it'll be in the protonate state. We have to be deprotonated when you do nucleophilic uh, substitutions. Okay, so same thing. So this, this is gone and this gets replaced, right? This replaces just like any SN1 reaction we've been doing, right? Same deal. However, whenever you do, whenever you have wedges and dashes and you do a substitution reaction, you will get enantiomers. And I made a whole enantiomer video, so please go check that out. But the easy way of describing it is just swap this. Just put the methoxy, right? This is methoxy. This is methanol. This is methoxy, right? Without, an hydrogen, with a hyd without a hydrogen. Just put this, redraw the entire thing, but now put the methoxy on the dashes now. And that's the enantiomer. Okay, so whenever you have wedges and dashes and you do a substitution reaction, you must draw both, right? The nucleophile will be attached to both the wedge and the dash. You need to show both of them. Otherwise, you'll, you, know, you might get it wrong on a test, okay? Now, what about the elimination reaction? So, this would be the alpha carbon. This is a beta carbon. This is a beta carbon. And this would be a beta carbon, okay? Remember, this is a CH3, it's still carbon, right? It's still, this is still a CH3. So it still has, you know, has protons on there. It's a carbon, it has protons. We can eliminate, doing elimination reaction on this beta carbon. Why is it? 
The reason we cannot do it is because this, this carbon has no protons available. This carbon can only have four bonds. It has one, two, three, and a double bond, which is four. There's no available protons. So this cannot be a beta carbon. It cannot exist. So the double bond will either go between here or here. Okay. Okay. So first we have this one, right? This is putting the double bond here, right? So we take the, uh, this, you know, the, the hydrogen here, right? This will take it, right? Leaving group leaders, obviously, right? And the double bond forms here to get the double bond, okay? That's that. That's the normal E1 reaction we would do, just like we've been doing. This is the same thing, except these are the E and Z confirmations of it. Now you're probably thinking, why are we doing this? Why do we do E and Z? So E and Z confirmation just means that all the functional groups are on one side, okay? Of, of the entire molecule, of the double bond, okay? So you'll notice that the double bond here, we have this, and it goes up, right, in the same vicinity, and this one goes up, and this one goes down. So they're E and Z, right? Why are we doing this? The reason you do E and Z, when you show E and Z confirmations, is when the functional groups are different on, on, on both ends of the carbon, right, of the double bond, right? So on both sides of the double bond, we have different groups here, right? Complete different groups. That is when you show E and Z. But normally on tests, you don't really show them, right? You, unless you're asked, show all stereo, stereochemical products, right? Unless you're specifically told to do it, then don't write it. It's too advanced. Okay, maybe your teacher's rude, mean, horrible, then you do it, okay? If not, then you don't even really, most of the time, you, you don't need to do it, right? If you're asked, it'd probably be like a multiple choice um, test instead, right? And you're, you're not going to be asked to draw it. I hardly see that ever. Uh, prove me wrong. You can send me on Instagram a picture that your professor told you to do so, and I'll be like, I'm wrong, you know. But most of the time, you do not need to write it, unless it specifically says like I did, okay? It's the same thing, except the, it's drawn differently, right? One's the E, one's C. Okay, now if you attach the, the double bond here, it would be the Hoffman product, right? So you have a hydrogen here. Steal this, leaving group leaves, right? And then the bond breaks and make a double bond here, right? So if you have a double bond there, that's exactly what this is. Okay. And that is it. That is Savalsis reactions. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. Until next time, later.